Right you are. <clears throat> well, to backtrack. I take it, Russ, you're aware that the Community Association meets the first Tuesday of each month, and as I'm sure you know, Don Skinner is part of the steering committee. And somehow, it came to Don's attention at this late juncture that Ted Driscoll found a buyer for this house, and I have to say, it did come as something of a shock when Don told us what sort of people they were. What sort of people are they? Well. Uh, <laughs> well, I suppose I'm forced to consider the possibility you actually don't know. Don't know what? Well, I mean, that they're colored. Who are? The family. It's a colored family. <sighs> so I contacted the wait, family. Wait, wait, oh, wait. You're saying Ted <laughs> never bothered to tell you. We uh, sort of gave Ted free reign. Uh, I don't think you're right on this one, oh, Carl. I am. Oh, I've spoken with the family. On the telephone? No, no, no. No, as a matter of fact, Betsy and I have just come directly from, well, from Hamilton Park. What is it? Come here a second. Now, Russ, you know as well as I do that this is a progressive community. What's he talking about? If you take the case of Gelman's Grocery, that's a fine example of how we've all embraced a different... Slow down a thinking. second, Bev. Get Ted Driscoll on the phone. What for? Carl says Carl is claiming... Russ, I have met personally with the family what and... Family? Carl claims this family, the family to whom Ted sold the house... It's a colored family. Sorry. Don't we say Negro now? I say well, it's Negro. only common courtesy, and I'm not trying to tell you how to Negro conduct today. your business. No, I think we both know what well, to do. And furthermore, I don't think Ted would pull a stunt like oh, that. Yes, well, we all admire Ted, but I don't think any of us would accuse him of putting the community's interests ahead of his own. Oh, this is ridiculous. And I don't think any of us have forgotten what happened with the family that moved on to Costner Avenue last year. Now, Costner Avenue is one thing, but Clybourne Street. Wait, 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 Carl, are you sure? I was sitting with them not two hours ago. But isn't it possible that they're, I don't know, Mediterranean, or... Bev, they are 100%. And I don't know how much time any of you have spent in Hamilton Park, but Betsy was waiting in the car, and I can tell you, there are some unsavory characters. Carl, but in the case of Gelman's, I think there was some mistrust at first, having been Kopechny's market for such a long time. But in the end of all, Murray Gelman found a way to fit in. And they hired the Wheeler boy. Is he the one with the... He's uh, the... you know. And fitting into a community is really what it all comes down to. The heck's going on up there? Some would say that change is inevitable, and I can support that if it's change for the better. But I'll tell you what I can't support. And that's disregarding the needs of the people who live in a community. But don't they have needs too? Don't who? The family. Which family? Well, the ones who... The purchasers? I mean, in... in principle, don't we all deserve to... Shouldn't we all have the opportunity <laughs> well, to... In principle, no question. But you can't live in a principle, can you? You gotta live in a house. And so do they. Not in this house, they don't. But here's the real question. <laughs> and what happened to love thy neighbor, if we're being so principled? Well, they would become our neighbors. And what about the neighbors you already have, Bev? I care about them, too. Well, I'm afraid you can't have it both ways. Okay, assuming Wait, that... why not? Well, do the boundaries of the neighborhood extend indefinitely? Who should we invite next, the Red Chinese? But the key question is this, would no. they... No! Why not have it both ways? Darling, I came to talk to Russ. Why not if it would benefit someone? But would they benefit? If they could become our neighbors? But they won't be your neighbors, Bev. You're the ones moving away. The question is, and it's one worth asking... Okay, what? let's assume your information is correct. It's a great play. It's good, it's funny, it's contemporary, it deals with a lot of great issues that... Uh, Hopefully we'll stimulate lots of great conversations afterwards, but it's also tremendously entertaining. It's, um, it's a play that's kind of a take on Lorraine Hansberry's play, A Raisin in the Sun, which is about an African-American family buying a house in a predominantly white neighborhood. And what he's done is set basically the exact same day as the end of Raisin in the Sun. He set a play in the white neighborhood where the white families are having a discussion about the family that's gonna buy this house. And he's invented a scenario why the family is selling the house. And it's basically a big argument about uh, whether or not that should be happening. 
Um, the second act of the play is set 50 years later in the exact same house where you get to see the ramifications of what happened after the house was purchased in 1959. So it's, uh, and it's an entirely different neighborhood, an entirely different uh, set of people played by the exact same actors, which is always really fun. Um, and some of the same issues are debated <laughs> in a very contemporary way. I play Albert uh, in 1959 and um, Kevin in 2009. The, the play's a, um, a companion piece to uh, the 1959 play, Raisin in the Sun. So uh, Bruce Norris, who won the Pulitzer for this play and best play at the Tonys last year and the Olivier last year, so it's been a huge hit around the world. In Lorraine Hansberry's uh, play, A Raisin in the Sun, um, <laughs> uh, the story is about this uh, working class um, black family in Chicago who have uh, saved and raised enough money to uh, purchase um, a, a new home in, in the suburbs, so it's a, it's a better opportunity for them, it's going to improve their life. Um, and this, uh, in Bruce Norris's uh, play Clybourne Park, this is the house in question. And what happens in A Raisin in the Sun is um, a, uh, a white man named Carl Lindner um, comes to the black family with an appeal um, for them to not move into the neighborhood. And it becomes, uh, you know, he comes representing the um, the housing community, the community association. House owners association. There you go. And, uh, and just asks them, you know, to not move in because it's a white neighborhood and they're a black family. So uh, that's, that's what um, happens. And it was actually, I think it was inspired by Lorraine Hansberry's um, parents. They, um, He's the writer of reasons. Yes. And uh, she, they tried to buy uh, a home in a predominantly white neighborhood and they they were basically barred by the housing or the community association and that case went all the way to the u.s supreme court so um That's yeah sort of, sort of what these plays touch on yeah. is uh changing communities in in america at that time and sort of what um what, what, the, what the feeling was and the sort of vibe going on uh, with race relations at that time. Well, you know, every time I talk about the issues in this play, I, I feel like I'm some sort of uh, sociology professor because <laughs> it really does cover the gamut. Like, it, it, racism is obviously a, a large part of it. Um, but also, I mean, it's more about the subtle forms racism takes. It isn't about something that's overt. It's about challenging ourselves and our own beliefs and saying what sort of, you know, what really are our beliefs? Are we as pure are, or are we hypocritical in some ways in our own beliefs about the subject of race? But it also covers, you know, the, the gamut from gentrification to the first act, uh, the family that's selling the house is uh, in mourning for their son. So it's about children, it's about families, it's about post-traumatic stress disorder. It's uh, uh, about upward mobility, you know, the, it, and most of all, I think it's about people, like it's about it's a very cracklingly written play. He's a, extremely good at dialogue, the playwright Bruce Norris. And because of that, I think we all recognize the people in the play. I think we, we can easily identify with them and we can say, oh yeah, that's me, oh no, that's me. And I think at some point in the play, we identify with all of the characters, whether we like to admit it or not. Well, I've seen this play done before and, I, and I'm inside it now and I, and I really hope that um, <laughs> And people come and see it that they'll ask themselves about the communities around that they live in and what they see around in their community and the different ethnicities and 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 and, if, and, and what would you do in these situ if this happened to you like would this bother you would this be would this be something that you would think is progressive or would you be afraid of it or I certainly hope you know you don't walk away from this show going I'm hungry, but you actually discuss the play yeah. afterwards. And I think it definitely is a play that yeah. you will have like you, rattling around. Yeah, yeah, you will definitely want to talk about it afterwards. Well, uh, as always, I mean, I hope they have a good time. It's a black comedy. I love it. I love black comedies. I love uh, being a little bit scandalized and a little bit shocked. And I think that the audience is when they, when they watch it, they will be a little bit shocked and they'll be shocked by what they laugh at. But it is an extremely funny play. And so you always want to entertain people when they come to the theater. Um, but like all great plays, it also has a great take home. Like it also will stimulate people to keep talking about it, which I think is really important that you're not only 
you know that's what the great thing about theater is it's a shared experience it's i think movies you can walk out and kind of say oh that was fun okay let's go do something else whereas theater you want to go out afterwards and say well let's talk about that and good plays will do that they'll entertain the hell out of you while you're in the theater and then when you walk out of the theater you'll still want to talk about it and you'll want to recommend it to people as well